One of the most frustrating things to teach is how to explain. How do we get students to stop those brief one-word answers where we're left guessing whether the student really got the material? How can we tell whether they're just parroting back an answer they memorized or if they really understood it? How do we train our students to explain the answer with reasoning and evidence? What we've got here is failure to communicate. Several years ago, the science team at our school agreed on a common goal to have students mastering their third paragraphs in the conclusions of their lab write-ups. We agreed the third paragraph should include whether the conclusion was correct or not, at least three pieces of data that show a trend, and an explanation of why the results came out in a particular way. That last one, explaining themselves, is the really tough one for middle school kids. Obviously, they're going to need practice with explaining, but how do we do that? The answer? Formative assessments, and lots of them. Most commonly used formative assessments are when teachers do check-ins with students, like exit or entry tickets, or lessons where the students learn something by expending some effort as the teacher facilitates class interaction. About 10 years ago, when I got my first set of clickers, I quickly realized that the reason the students remember material so much better when they use clickers was they made an attempt at answering something first, then saw the correct answer right after making that attempt, however feeble or awesome it was. They were engaging a working part of their brains, the episodic memory, in effect, supercharging their memory. This video is not only about using formative assessments, but a type of formative assessment that displays exemplars to the class in real time. This way, students get to see a model of well-formatted or working answers. Discussions can emerge and everybody can make changes. I said that this is already mixed with water, bromothymol blue and water, so it can't be which one? It cannot be A. Okay. All right. Way to go, guys. That is correct. It takes all three of them. It's called Pear Deck, the metacognition machine. Remember the goal. Why are they learning this? Maybe it's clear in your mind why, but don't forget to tell the kids. So again, we're going to do this under exam conditions. These are questions representative of what you might see in an exam. It's a good idea to continue reminding them why they're doing each exercise, like this question will be on the next test, so you all need to know this. Or, I'm looking for good explanations because you're going to need to be a good explainer from now on. I know, I'm, I'm moving fast. But this is kind of on purpose so that we can do a little disc at the end. I know you guys want to. Okay, are we ready? Pear Deck includes several types of formative assessment tools. One is the basic essay spill the beans type question, the importance of which cannot be overstated. This one says exothermics heat escaping, endothermics heat being absorbed, exothermic would feel hotter, endothermic would feel colder, however hot and cold do not exist, it's just the fact that energy is being absorbed or escaping. Wow, that's awesome. We teachers often find ourselves inserting the right words, filling in those mistakes our students make when they write their paragraphs. Sometimes just a single wrong word can invalidate the entire answer. So our students definitely need practice under our guidance with the paragraph text function. Thank you very much. That was a really good answer there. Another one is multiple choice. This one has been exploited by more formative assessment software than any other. Examples are Kahoot, Quizlet, and Clickers. These can be great for a quick delivery of large amounts of material. Something particularly unique with Pear Deck is its ability to allow the teacher the control to either show the real-time population of the answers during the posting of the question or closing it for view afterwards. Either choice has its advantages. Need about one of those answers. I said that this is already mixed with water, bromothymol blue and water, so it can't be which one. It cannot be A. Okay. All right. Way to go, guys. That is correct. It takes all three of them. My personal favorite has to be the freehand draw function. The student can use a blank space where they can draw their answer on a background image like a map. And there's a letter function to label their picture, along with the same basic art tools like color, width of pen, and an eraser. 
This drawing of ideas and assimilation of information in a visual context is a vital formative tool for synthesizing information in the child's science classroom. I feel that using these visual formative experiences in conjunction with drawing, labeling, explanation type questions on exams are much more effective than the traditional fill-in-the-blank type handouts and tests, especially for the retention of the most difficult concepts in science. And there's pinning. This is another one where we can choose the background picture we want the student to work with. They can choose degrees of yes and no, good or bad, more or less, any kind of opposite, or places on a map or a diagram. One that I had them do was locate where the electrons and protons are located in the atom. Again, this works with their special awareness. Another supercharger of memory. Doesn't every teacher want their students to practice good group behavior? So wouldn't it be a good idea to create a formative assessment to go along with our beginning of the year activities? This year, our science team decided on a simple engineering challenge. Each team of students would get a limited supply of straws, popsicle sticks, and tape to get a tennis ball supported as high as possible off their desks. I had my kids answer some basic leading questions about what it means to be a good team member. I often reminded them of their thoughtful answers throughout the year. All of us probably have a list of skills that we want our students to leave with. One of those skills that science teachers always wrestle with is graphing. We want our students to be able to label a graph with the correct title, decide what labels should go on the X and Y axes, and there's definitely a skill in deciding what is the independent and the dependent variable, not to mention plotting coordinates on the graph and when a line versus bar graph makes more sense. This always takes quite a bit of class time each year, so a few well-placed formative assessments can lighten our load. Sometimes a video has exactly what the kids need to know. Many of us have given question sheets that coincide with our favorite videos. These are great formative assessments. Now we have the capability to give our assessment with the vast palette of tools that Pear Deck has to offer. These are a few I gave this year that go with a video series on atoms and elements. By the end of this year, I had run out of time to fit in one of our largest labs of the year, Too Hot to Handle. It's known in the science community as chemistry in a Ziploc bag. So with only one day to fit in this culminating concept thick lab, I made a quick demonstration with Pear Deck questions to go along with the lesson. Now let's see if anybody got this. That is correct. 